that Pine Valley stay. The same old days that brought me here and soon gonna carry me away. Oh, darling, you can't love but one. Only one. Oh, darling, you can't love but one. Just one. You can't love but one. And have any fun. Oh, darling, you can't love but one. Oh, darling, you can't love two. No, oh, darling, you can't love two. You can't love two. And your little heart be true. Oh, darling, you can't love two. I'm leaving on that pine valley stay. I'm leaving on that pine valley stay. The same old stage that brought me here and it's been gonna carry me away. Oh, darling, you can't love five. Darling, you can't love five. You can't love five and get honey from my behind. Oh, darling, you can't love five. Oh, darling, remember what you said. Oh, darling, remember what you said. Remember what you said. You would rather see me dead than leaving on that Pine Valley stage. Thank you. We've been on our way in a jiffy, ladies. You're living in an age of speed now. Rapid transit, we call it. You want to get out and stretch your legs, you better make it snappy. <laughs> get out, he says. Get out to stretch. Get out to drink. Get out to eat. Get out to transfer. Get out to... Man, the next time I get out, I'm going to stay out. <laughs> that don't go for Manhattan. Here. Hey, you boys drifting? Yeah, We're waiting yeah, for the ball roundup. How'd you like to go to work for me? Work? For you? You don't look like you could afford a new saddle. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can't now, but I will by tonight. Fellas, this is Slim Pickens. He's going to inherit a big ranch up in Pine Valley. They're reading the will tonight over at Zeke Reynolds' place. Yup. Well, I'll be doggone. The Zeke Reynolds' place? You would be the last of the Reynolds heirs. What do you know about ranch? Just think, Maddie. Me with a great big rambling ranch home, with a great big screen porch. And that means no more dictation from the boss, and no more crowded horse cars, and no more bustling offices. <laughs> no more bright lights, no more pretty clothes, no more cafes. Old Zeke Reynolds must have been a hermit to live way out here. Come on up to the ranch and we'll talk about it. Here comes the station driver. Don't forget to write that letter, ma'am. Manhattan! Oh, Maddie! <laughs> you little angel! 
Did I say angel? Between that ranch, Miss Jack is going to inherit in you. You're going to be the death of me yet. Hi, Mr. Davis. How are you? How are you? How's the law business today? Oh, I'm picking up, son. Picking up. I dropped by to tell you not to forget the will reading at the Reynolds place tonight. Oh, we'll be there. Couldn't hardly forget us being the only heirs to Uncle Zeke's property. The only heirs, then. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. this town around his lumber mill. When he died, my brother and I took over. Pine Village was a thriving middle community. Till the ranchers moved into the valley and got laws passed to keep us from cutting the timber. Naturally, that closed us down. The ranchers had to be protected against flash floods. They'd be washed out if all the trees were cut. But how about the timbermen? With all that money standing idle on those mountainsides, they're all going broke. Dan, this is Mr. Stocker of the Forestry Service. I'm Carrie's brother. Well, I guess you're the man I came to see. Your letter to the Forestry Service claiming you found evidence of bark beetle in the valley stirred up a lot of commotion in the department. What section of the valley did you find it in? On Zeke Reynolds' property. Stocker, I'm afraid you'll have to condemn the whole valley. But Dan, that would mean every tree in the valley would have to be cut down to prevent spreading the disease. Maybe we could open the mill again. Well, that may be possible, Miss Hurley if the trees are condemned. Only I just rode through that property on my way here, and I found no evidence of the disease. Show him, Dan. What does that look like? It's a shame that all those beautiful trees are going to have to die. I don't think it's going to be that bad. The trees the Forestry Service condemned for salvage last year on the western slope of the Rockies were diseased for 15 years. So if the beetle is on the Reynolds property, it'll take a long time before we have to condemn the forest. And with the progress we're making with tree surgery technique and blight-destroying solutions, the chances are by that time we'll be able to control the infection. Oh, that that's good news, isn't it, Dad? Oh, yeah. Yes. Did you come by yourself, Mr. Stalker? Why, yes. The department felt that one man could handle the job all right. Did you come through town? No, your letter sounded too important. I came straight here from Denver. Why do you ask? Well, I... I just thought you might be a little tired. I'll fix you a cup of tea while you two talk business. You know, Stalker, it would mean a lot of money to all of us if we were allowed to open the mill. You can see the beetle has started to do its damage. You say yourself the service can't control the spreading of it. So why wait for years for them to die when we could cut them now and all of us share in the profit? What do you mean, us? Do they still pay you foresters 900 a year? That's right. And I'm struggling along on it just fine. Early, when you had to close your mill down because a law was passed to stop you lumbermen from stripping the forest, it was done to protect the ranchers and their homes in the valley from flash floods. I know all that, Stocker, but don't be a fool. My sister and myself were about to inherit the Reynolds property, 60,000 acres of the finest timber. What do you say? If you condemn all those trees, I'll cut you in for a third interest. In a democracy, laws are passed for the benefit of the majority. And it's my duty as an American to see that those laws are carried out. One number two. No, just one, please. I hope you'll, you'll forget what my brother just said. Sure. You really should be ashamed of yourself, Dan. We all get carried away sometimes, sometimes without thinking. Well, thank you for the tea, folks. Good day.
As soon as it starts, get him out of here. Save the uniform for Dusty. If we can't get this ring off, you'll have to cut it off with pliers. I'll take care of that later. You know, Dan, everything works out for the best. Now we don't have to cut anybody in in those 60,000 acres Uncle Zeke left us. Oh, Lucy. Steady now. Oh, Maddie. Well, this ain't what we visualized. Big rambling house with picture windows. But this place ain't even got a roof on it. Are you sure this is the right place? Yep. If you ask for the Zeke Reynolds place, this is it. And if you ask me, it's haunted. Well, who's asking you? Come on, Lucy. Let's get out of here. Maddie, it's just what I've dreamed of all my life. Just look at all this property. And look at those great, big, beautiful trees. <laughs> Man, have not you gonna like it around here? <laughs> but where's he gonna live, Miss Jackie? Look at that house. Oh, Maddie, it's going to be fun. Why, with a little paint and some lace curtains, you won't know the old place. Is the hands gonna help us fix it up? Oh, Miss Jackie, let me relax and get my courage back. must be smoking a big black cigar. I'm getting out of here, Miss Jackie. Don't be silly. It's probably just smoke. Is you show? I'm show. Something sure smells. Must be sulfur in that water. I never heard of him until I got the letter from the lawyer. Of course, he could have been a half-brother to my grandfather. Good gracious. That makes me related to that. <laughs> Just call me cousin. How do you figure in this? I don't. Slim works for me down in Texas on my ranch, and I came up here with him just to see that he gets a fair deal. Not more relatives. Those are not relatives. That's some boy Slim hired to work for him when he thought he was going to inherit the ranch all by himself. Stoke up the boiler so the ladies will have some hot water. Sure enough, Rex. Brother, look at them men. If they keep coming, we won't have enough room to flip a flapjack. Look at them hungry faces. What are we going to feed them? <laughs> What's gonna be on that menu tonight? Roast lamb and gravy. Maddie! That piece of meat! How could you? Ah, oh, Miss Jackie, don't you like roast lamb and gravy? Not for me. That poor little defenseless goat. <laughs> Defenseless, he says. What's that smell? Oh, I just borrowed to use when dinner 
was ready. <laughs> yeah, and it's going right on that doggone goat. At least then he won't be sneaking up on nobody. Come here, you fugitive from a coyote trap. <laughs> <laughs> This is Joshua. Oh, how do you do? Howdy. And you must be Jacqueline Reynolds. That's right. <laughs> hey, it looks like that fool lawyer's got a party going on out here. He must be crazy. Good evening. This is hardly the occasion for celebration, Lawyer Davis. What's the meaning of this? Who are all these people? Well, two of them are co-heirs of Ezekiel Reynolds. What do you mean? I thought we were the only heirs. Easy, Dan. Uh, uh, this is Rex Allen. Uh, you make the introductions. I'll get the necessary papers. We'll get right down to business. Sure. I don't cut in on this, but this is Jackie Reynolds. How do you do? do? And this is Mr. Joshua Pickens. Howdy. How do you do? Now, if you'll all just step over here, please. Everyone concerned. We'll get down to the business at hand. <laughs> Make yourselves comfortable. There. Oh, yes, that's, that's, that's fine. Last will and testament of Ezekiel Reynolds, deceased. Know all by these presents, I, Ezekiel Reynolds, being of sane mind and sound disposition, do hereby will and bequeath all my worldly possessions to the following heirs to Carrie and Daniel Hurley, in memory of their mother, a dear departed sister, one-third of my estate. One-third? One-third. To Jacqueline Reynolds, my grandniece, and last survivor to carry the Reynolds name, one-third of my estate. To Joshua Pickens, Jr., son of the benefactor who grubstaked me when I moved from Texas to Pine Village, one-third of my estate. Oh, hi, <laughs> Just what are you claiming your dad did for Zeke Reynolds? Boss said that Paul lent him $300. Zeke paid him back, didn't he? I don't know. I reckon so. Just as I figured. It's a trick, Carrie. No, Dan. I don't care. Our father gave Zeke Reynolds his start made a rich man out of him. I don't think that has anything to do with it. If old Zeke thought enough of Slim's dad to remember his son, it's perfectly legal. Perfectly legal. This is none of your business. Keep your nose out of it. You think I'm going to stand by and see a big dumb ox get a third of this timber? 
Now, don't go showing your bad side, Mr. Hurley. I'll show you. <laughs> So you still want to make this some of your business, huh? Yes, I do. You're mighty brave with all of these guys hanging on to me. Let him go, boys. <laughs> suits over this. I, uh, you know where my office is. I'd be very glad to handle the case. Good night. Go and wash up your mess. I'm sorry this had to happen. My brother has an unforgivable temper. I I that that one that one. Stupid fool. Yeah, I guess I did lose my head, Carrie. You certainly did. You almost had it knocked off. Well, you're the bright one. What are we going to do about it? Well, we're certainly not going to fight with them. I'll be out here in the morning. All peaches and cream and we'll buy our partners off. Cheap. Shut up. Here they come. Maybe we won't have to buy them off. Good night, Slim. I'm sorry this all had to turn out this way. Oh, that's all right. We're going to be one big happy family. Good night. Good night. Hey, I'm sure glad there's some meat left from supper. You ought to be ashamed of yourself, Slim. Letting Rex fight all your battles. Guess you think I'm a big coward, Miss Jackie. But there's something I'll have to show you. Here, hold this. That's my mom. No fooling. She made me promise no matter what happened, I'd never fight. She said she'd always be watching over me to see that I didn't break my promise. Well, I guess I understand, Slim. Gee, thanks. I knew you would. You see, I gotta keep Ma happy. Here, Rex, got your knife and I'll split this with you. Looks like you're gonna need it all, boy. What a goose egg. Here. Come on, get out of here. What's wrong? Come on, get out of here. What's the matter? You crazy or something? Whoa. Good morning. Good morning. I don't know what's so good about it. I want to apologize for what happened last night. We were a little disappointed in not inheriting the whole estate. We wanted to preserve it in memory of our mother. I understand. Carrie told us all about that. And all about the bark beetle. It's just bad luck. It seems the place has brought them nothing but bad luck, Dan. The boiler blew up last night. It sure did, and that's bad luck. But it's good luck that nobody got hurt. But it's sure bad luck what Miss Carey says about them bark beetles chawing up all them trees that way. Why, by the time they finished chawing, the engines wouldn't even want that place. We've talked it over, and we've decided to sell. That's fine. Won't you come in, and we'll make all the arrangements? Yes, come in. Morning, Maddie. Morning, Mr. Ray. Having trouble? Not yet. I ain't got started. <laughs> Where are you heading? Pine Village to load in some bibbles. <laughs> well, I better drive you in. That's quite a trip for a tenderfoot. Tenderfeet? That ain't what's bothering me since that stagecoach ride. <laughs> yeah, fine. <laughs> Mr. Riggs, there's something I forgot to tell you. Miss Jackie.
Becky and Tim went into town with Miss Carey. With Miss Carey? What for? Well, she come out here this morning with a lot of bad news, and she was showing Miss Jackie where the bugs was eating all the trees on the place. Now, she talked about so many bugs, she got me itching. Bugs eating up the trees, well, they look plenty healthy to me. Well, she said just as soon as the bugs eat up all the trees around here, this property wouldn't be worth two cents. So I guess Miss Jackie and Slim decided to sell out while they could. Smart operator like this Dan Hurley could get Slim to sell out for car fare back to Texas. <laughs> and I know Miss Jackie. She ain't no businesswoman. You, uh, you don't think they'd get cheated, do you? Well, it could be. Well, come on, man. Hang on. <laughs> I took the liberty of having it drawn up. I, I felt sure you'd see it our way. Gosh, Miss Jackie, you better check it over. I didn't bring my spectacles with me. Once Dendroctonus frontillus infects one tree, the whole forest's done for. Dendroctonus frontillus? Hmm. You don't say. Yes, it's a species of Scolatidae epidal, commonly known as a bark beetle. It spreads like a forest fire. That's the reason we can only offer 2,000 for your share of the estate. The Reynolds trees are badly infected. You see, we want to preserve as much as possible of the property as a memorial. Now, the $2,000 will be a small percentage of what it will cost us to fix it up as a public park. Gosh, Miss Jackie, that ain't very much, but it sure don't look like the price will be going up none. What do you say? $2,000. Let's take it. I think you're smart. I do, too. Carrie, fix the folks some tea. By all means. Miss Hurley, this sure smells good. Just a minute. What's the idea of busting in here like that, Alan? Sign outside says this is a business office. What are you signing? It's a bill of sale for our share of the Reynolds place. Isn't it wonderful? Yeah, we're getting $2,000 for it. $2,000? Why, your share in the ranch is worth a lot more than that. It won't be in a few months. The whole forest will be infected, and with the trees dead, erosion will set in, and flash floods will take care of the rest. Mr. Allen doesn't know much about pine trees. He said there were just a few cottonwoods in his section of Texas. Gee, Rex, $2,000. Why, I didn't know there was that much money in Colorado. Slim, before you sell, I want to write a friend of mine in the Colorado Forestry Service and find out just how serious this bark beetle is. Of course, if you want to take Mr. Allen's advice, it's your privilege. But in the meantime, we may be forced to withdraw our offer. Think it over. I am a-thinking. Well, you'd never know it to look at you. Well? I'm sorry, Miss Carey. We'll have to wait until Rex does get some more information. In that case, we'll make arrangements to divide the property. I'll see Lawyer Davis about our third in the morning. Good day. Oh! What's the matter? Nothing. My underwear's bunched up on. Like the end of a beautiful friendship. Yeah, no sense to you. What are we?
we gonna do now, Carrie? That smart Alec Allen has stepped on my toes for the last time. Now hold your temper, Dan. We'll find some way to take care of him. I is this. And who are you addressing as sis? It's Dusty, isn't it? That's right, Brother Dan. Don't act so surprised, sis. You sent for me, didn't you? The last time I saw you, I was 10 years old. And I came up to about here. You whipped me then. But I don't think you can whip me now. Now, boys, there'll be no trouble here. Trouble? He's been nothing but trouble since the day he was born. Yeah. Even then, I couldn't stomach a family of sanctimonious crooks. And we've had to stomach your escapades ever since you ran away with that circus. Yeah, we've spent a fortune getting you out of reformatories and jails, and from the looks of you, it'd be my guess you're running from the law right now. Well, there was a little misunderstanding about some checks. How about handing over some of our lumber mill profits to take care of it? The lumber mill's been closed for a long time, Dusty. But we're planning to open it again. That's why we sent for you. This time we're asking you to do something for us. And there'll be some money in it for you, too. What is it? You're going to be a forest ranger, Dusty. A forest ranger? Why, with my record, they wouldn't even let me wear the boots. There's nobody in the village that remembers you as a Hurley. We've got a uniform that'll fit you perfectly and all the necessary papers you'll need. Yeah? Where? We borrowed those from a ranger by the name of John Stocker. This ring's broken. That's so you can spread it and fit it to your finger, Dusty. Did I say broken? It's been cut. Say, you two are pretty involved in this. We have to be. We need money. So now I'm John Stocker. What am I supposed to do? You're going to condemn every tree in Pine Valley. I hate to order you to cut down these fine trees, but once that bark beetle gets solidly established, why, well, they'll all be dead like that tree there. That tree was killed by lightning four years ago. Well, what I mean is the whole forest will be dead like that tree. Well, if you say so, law's a law. I guess I'll survive the loss. Well, what am I going to do with the trees after I cut them? Why don't you see Dan Hurley? Maybe he'll start up his old mill. Here's your authorization to start cutting. Thanks, Stalker. Thanks. Yeah, I'll see Dan Hurley. I didn't invent this system, Bill. The government's been letting salvage contracts for years. I know it, but our wood's too good to give away at your salvage price. Why don't you take it someplace else? We haven't got time. We need every man we can get to finish that cutting with the deadline that forestry man gave us. I'm sorry, gentlemen. That's all I can afford to pay. Take it or leave it. What else can you do? It's robbery, that's what it is. Sure, it's robbery. Bertie's got the only mill around here, so you gotta accept his proposition. Thank you, gentlemen. There are two more orders, Dusty. The board fee will run in a million, and so will the money at the city prices. We're really gonna clean up, Dan. We'll need that Reynolds timber. I'm going over and work on them. In the meantime, I'll get the axes busy on the property we've already got tied up. this place for nothing, and Dan Hurley's offered you a salvage price for the lumber contract. What do you got to lose? A lot of good grazing land. If those trees go and a few good rains, this place would be barren. Why, it'd affect every rancher in the valley. Why'd it prevent flash floods? But I told you, Mr. Hurley has promised to dig contour ditches to control the watershed. I don't think that'd do any good. I've been studying up on the seasonal rainfall. Seasonal there. rainfall has nothing to do with diseased trees. Listen, Miss Reynolds. If you listen to this Allen fellow and refuse to sell your lumber to Dan Hurley as salvage, I'll be forced to send a crew in here to do the cutting for you. Think it over. Either sell to Hurley or see your trees rotting on the ground. Careless for a forest ranger. You know, folks, one of these little things can destroy a tree. It took a hundred years to grow. One tree will make a million matches, but one match can destroy a million trees. What are we going to do, Rick? After all, he does have the authority to cut the trees down. I don't know right now, but we're going to hold him off as long as we can. I sure wish I'd get an answer from my letter to the forestry department. Let's go to work, boys. Well, Terry, Slim and that girl still won't scare. What are we going to do now? 
Dusty, you're going back there this afternoon. I don't want to tangle with that Allen guy. When he gets an answer to the letter he wrote to the Forestry Service, why, well, he could blow this whole scheme up in our faces. He's not going to get an answer to that letter. The weekly mail comes in today, and it's going to be delivered this afternoon. Ooh. blowing that bristle on here. <laughs> Don't get too anxious, girly. This ain't from your city, Slicker. <laughs> well, it ain't very interesting. <laughs> nope. It ain't like the one I just delivered to the Winter Perkins. This is from the Office of the Forestry Service. It's for Mr. Allen. Here, what are you doing reading other folks' mail? This is what Mr. Allen's been waiting for. He and the boys are building a fence back there. We're going to have a cattle ranch out <laughs> Thunder. They'll be fixing fences in the rain. You folks are new to this country. If them clouds keep building up, I'd advise you to do what I'm doing, head for high ground. Uh -oh. Come on, Lucy, pick him up and put him down. What are you doing here, mister? Come for that letter. Well, your name ain't on this letter. Forestry department, isn't it? How did you know that? He asked me to pick it up. I said, hand it over. Well, if you pick it up, you get it from Mr. Allen, because I ain't going to give it to you. Oh, yes, you are. Oh, will. no, I ain't. Oh. 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 Little early to call dinner, isn't it? Boy, it's never too early to feed this face. Get away from me! Oh. I had to shoot her. I did it for you, for this. You gotta cover me. You idiot, I can't cover for you. You let your horse outside. He'll know you're here. But, Carrie, let's... Oh, you're hysterical. What you need is a shot of Dan's whiskey. He's on my trail. Either you swear that I've been here with you all morning, or I'll tell him everything. You gotta do it, Terry. I'll send him for the sheriff, and that'll give you time to clear out. What's the meaning of this? Step aside, Miss Hurley. You can hear all about it at the county seat. I'm taking Stalker to the sheriff for shooting Maddie. And if she dies, he'll be charged with murder. 
murder. man hurt bad. Hurt? He's dead. Look at his face. You beat him to death. I saw everything. You'll hang for this, Alan. He's not dead. I want to get him to a doctor. You're not leaving this house until the sheriff comes. you here? He's not dead, Slam. We gotta go get to the doctor. Right away. Holy smokes, it's raining. You can't go out there without your hat on. You think you're dead for pee your moment. That's not what I'm worried about now. taking out bullets. The one I just took out of Maddie went straight through her shoulder and bounced off her rib and flattened itself against her arm bone. One time, though, it paid to be hefty. The bullet was spent by the time it got through those layers and layers. She'll be as good as new, though, in a few days. I'll hold still, Rex. I can't understand why Stalker'd want to shoot Maddie. Well, at least I don't have to take a bullet out of you. It just left a nice, clean wound. I'll clean it out good, though, so there won't be an infection. Hey, you're messing things up. Hold on my arm, boy. What do you think happened to Stalker keeling over like that? Well, without an autopsy, I can't say for certain. But a brain hemorrhage or a ruptured spleen may produce the same symptoms. Looks healthy to me. Well, you can't always tell by that. 
He might have gotten a hold of some tainted food that poisoned him. Oh! Sorry, Alan. It wasn't me. It was Slim. You darn tootin' it was me. Let go of there. Hey, Doc, you better take a look at this. <laughs> That's a long ways from your heart. That's the man, Sheriff. Arrest him. I've come here for the body of John Stocker. Where is it? All right, Dan, put it in the carriage. Just a minute. Before anybody removes that body, I want Dr. Sawyer to perform an autopsy. Our company doctor will do that, and I'll see that the sheriff gets the report. She was the first one to come to me and claim the body. I'll get permission from his relatives for the autopsy and send his remains to them. Even though you killed him, Stocker would still be alive today if we hadn't sent for him. You mean if he was alive, he'd be in jail. Sheriff, this dead man shot Matty this afternoon. If I'm responsible for his death, it was in self-defense. <sighs> self-defense? He came into my house and deliberately beat that man until he was dead. I'll swear to that in court. I was the only witness. I'm afraid I'll have to hold you, Alan. It ain't right, Sheriff. All right, Dan. Just a minute. I want his personal effects. That's funny. His head is so swollen, I can't get this ring off. What'll I do, Doc? Cut it off. Oh, it's all right. It's broken. Let me have something to pry it open with. There it is. All right, you can have them now. Harry Hurley charged you with murder. We'll have to hold you for the result of the autopsy. How is his wound? As good as new. You can take him to jail now if you'd like. All right, hurry up with that shirt and come on. It's my opinion that Allen's not responsible for that man's death. These lumbermen would do anything to stop anybody from helping the ranchers. The bad blood that exists between the lumbermen and the ranchers has nothing to do with anything in this case. Evacuating the town, Doc. The water's rising right up to the top of the levee, and we need every man we can get to keep it from breaking through. And it's all your fault. You and your lumbermen. We were safe in this valley until you started cutting the trees. You've got to be stopped once and for all. Come on, Dan. Let's get back to the mill while we still have a chance to get to high ground. Come on, Doc. I want to help, Sheriff. You can trust me. Me too. Water's as high as he says it is. We'll need every able-bodied man in the valley. Get back to the ranch, Slam, and tell the boys. Maybe Jackie can help, too. You won't need that. Work 
this man before. Let's get him in the town for identification. Looks like he'd been dead for quite a while. Sure does. Where'd you find him? The flood uncovered him. One little break in the levee like this last night, and the whole burned town will go sailing right down the river. Yeah, and if Hurley and his timbermen don't quit cutting, there won't be a rancher in the valley that'll have a home left. Too bad the law can't do something about it. Yes, it is too bad. Looks like us ranchers are going to have to do it ourselves. Well, so since this man didn't die as a result of the flood, he wasn't drowned, he died from poison. Poison? What kind? One that acts very quickly. The symptoms are a swelling of the hands and feet which remains even after death. Well, the man I'm accused of killing had the same symptoms. Isn't that right, doctor? That's right. Come here a minute. The motive for this man's death must have been robbery. There's been a ring cut off his finger. Sheriff, may I see the ring you took off of the body the Hurleys claim? I thought it was funny at the time that he'd wear a ring that had been cut. Does this match the mark left on his finger where the ring was cut off? Why, yes, it matches perfectly. This ring was cut off of that man's hand because it was swollen. They couldn't get it off any other way. To John Stocker on his 10th year of service from his pals. Stocker? If this ring came off that man's finger, that's Stocker. Who are you accused of murdering? I don't know, but the swelling of the hands on both bodies prove they died of the same poisoning. Doctor, how long would you say it took this poison to take effect? Well, that depends on the rate of circulation after the introduction to the bloodstream. But in any event, it wouldn't take long. Carrie Hurley was with the man who was posing as Stocker just a few minutes before he died. She could have poisoned this man, too. Who would profit if a man posing as a forest ranger were to overrule the law against cutting timber by condemning every tree in Pine Valley? They might be doing a lot of dangerous guessing there, Alan. If the Hurleys are innocent, they surely wouldn't mind answering a few questions. Come on, Sheriff. Do you mind bringing that along? Not at all. Found us the dog crawl along the road. Looks like he's been shot. He's yours, isn't he? Manhattan. He's still alive, Miss Jackie. Take him to the house and see what you can do for him. Where's Rex Allen? The sheriff's still holding him. Allen's always been a friend of us, Rancher. Thought maybe he might want to ride with us. We're going to stop Hurley and his mob before there's another flood. And we need every man we can get. That Hurley gang is responsible for Maddie getting shot. And now Manhattan. Well, what about it, boys? You can count yeah, on Hurley. Yeah. Uh, Come on. Hold on, fellas. Let's let the sheriff handle this thing. Pretty bad wound. I'll get the eye down and cut. Poor little guy. It's going to take you an eye down and cut to make it well. <laughs> and the prayer of faith will save the sick. And the Lord will raise him up.
The ranchers are on their way to burn the mill. Shut the mill down and get the men together. Well, Dan, we should have known this would happen sooner or later. They started this war. We got enough men now to run every one of them out of the valley. All right, we'll stop them before they get to the mill. Strange, the place looks deserted. J.T. Stalker's integrity and experience in this department could have consciously condemned him. This letter, therefore, will authorize your local sheriff to resume enforcement of the flood control law pending a thorough investigation by this department. Very truly yours, George Watson. So that's what all that writing says. Hey, Sheriff, you got to do something. Them ranchers is on their way here to burn down this mill. Well, that's why the Hurleys are gone. They found out about it and they've gone to stop them. Those ranchers are running right into an ambush. Now, well, with this letter as evidence, we'll stop and avoid bloodshed. The law wants Dan and Carrie Hurley. You gave me your promise never to fight. I told you that I'd be watching over you to see that you never broke your promise. Well, I'm not watching now. And besides, he hits you first. Thanks, Mo. Wait a minute, Rick. Mo said he's all right. <laughs> I want to read to you. 
found that letter, I thought I told you to burn it. And that's all right. We can alibi that. We'll blame it all on Stocker. We've got to get back to the mill and get rid of that poison. They haven't found it yet. Other sheriffs would be up here after us. Come on, let's go. Now, you all better come down here before I charge you all with murder. Just trying to save the state the expense of a murder trial. I guess I wouldn't even have time to fix my hair before you called the sheriff. You'll have plenty of time to fix your hair in jail. Well, with this temperature, it makes you well. Now go on and quit dogging it. <laughs> you found Dan's body down the river. I don't think Carrie will be bothering the ranchers much anymore, either. He's gonna be in jail for a long time. I talked to the forestry department about this bark beetle, and they said there never has been any trace of it in the whole valley. If they ever do find any with these new controls, they can whip it. Oh, that's wonderful, Rex. That means that Slim and I can stay and keep the ranch. Can you buy those cattle for us? I'm on my way right now. Look out, Slim! <laughs> Sure fooled that goat that time. <laughs> <laughs> 